What is going on, everybody? John Middlecoff, Three and Out Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, if you're watching on the Volumes YouTube page, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the page, as well as our friends listening live on AMP. Hope everything's going well. Great day of football. We have the Final Four. Chiefs hosting the Bengals, little rematch, and 49ers at the Birds in Philly. I can't wait. Uh, the four best teams are here. Let's dive into some football. But before we do, let me tell you about my friends at game time. Here's what I need you to do. This is the fastest growing ticket app in America. I just went to my first hockey game. It was incredible. Big hockey guy now. I will go again because of my friends at game time. I went to the app. I downloaded it on my phone. I signed up. And when I signed up, I typed in John, that's J-O-H-N in the promo code. And I got $20 off a pair of tickets. Now, if you want to go to an NBA game, if you want to go to a uh, college basketball game, if you want to go to NHL games, if you want to go to concerts, take your friend, take your dad, take your mom, take your wife, take your sister, take your brother, take your buddies, your son, whatever. Use game time and use my promo code J-O-H-N to go to any event wherever you live. Get the best deal with game time, download the app on your phone, sign up, use the promo code J-O-H-N. Can't recommend it enough. Love my friends at game time. Let's dive into some football. And overall take, the best four teams are playing. And I think sometimes in the NCAA tournament, when you get to the final four, it's not always the best team, right? There are some upsets. There are some underdogs. There are some Cinderella stories. The four best teams are playing. Clearly in the NFC, the two best teams are playing. Niners at the Eagles. Let's go. It was pretty clear over the second half of the season, there was a big three in the AFC. It was the Chiefs, the Bengals, and the Bills. And what's weird is we held the Bills to such high esteem all season long because of the game they almost won last year at Kansas City, even though the Bengals went to the Super Bowl and also beat the Chiefs last year in the AFC Championship, also beat them during the regular season. But it was those three teams every year is different. And we saw today, like, actually, no. The Bills are not remotely close to as good as the Bengals. And they got worked. And we'll dive into that game here in a second. But when you look at the 49ers and the Cowboy game, the thing that stood out to me the most is, listen, I I have some takes that I'm very, very uh, adamant about, right? The Brandon Staley take, my Cliff Kingsbury take, my thoughts on the Patriots coaching staff. And... One thing with Dak Prescott is I never understood how you could pay him $40 million a year. Now, unlike Brandon Staley, who I think is kind of a fake guy, I like Dak a lot. Fantastic human being. The type guy you want in your building as an NFL team. But not every player is worthy of being paid a premium. And just because certain players play positions that net them X amount of money doesn't mean that you should pay them that amount of money. I got no problem breaking the bank for Nick Bosa's, for Micah Parsons, for Jamar Chase's, for Trent Williams. Go around the league to the top players. I I pay premiums for premiums. All pros, elite, pro bowl guys, I will pay top of the market. Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, whatever. Because I know in the biggest moments, those guys on a given game, on a given series, in a given matchup, will dominate, will be the best player on the field will be the best player at their given position, no matter who we're playing. Dak Prescott can have a great game. He did versus Tampa. Newsflash, Tampa stinks. Over the course of a season, though, Dak nets out where he always nets out, somewhere between like 10 and 13 in the league, which is, on the grand scheme of things, pretty good. But in the playoffs, you watch him, you go, I don't know. I don't see it because it's not about one individual pass. It's about the turnovers. He's throwing the ball to the other team. I think I saw on Twitter today, five picks in his playoff career. Today he threw two and he easily could have thrown a third that Dre Greenlaw would have walked in the end zone. In these big playoff games, in the divisional round, in the conference championship, and obviously in the Super Bowl. As a quarterback, you have to take care of the football. And I've defended Dak on individual games, like in that Jags game where they lost in overtime. 
and I forget it might have been Noah Brown. I forget the exact receiver. It hit off his his numbers. Not every interception is on the quarterback. We see it throughout the league, right? You can throw a pick that the that the wide receiver should get that on their stat sheet, but that's not the way it works. The, the interceptions fall on the quarterback. Today's interceptions were hideous. They were embarrassing, and they ultimately, in a game that was nineteen to twelve, and for a large portion of it was six to six and nine to nine, decided the freaking game. It led to six points, multiple field goals, his turnovers. They were backbreakers. Clearly, the Cowboys this year did not have the potent weapons like they did last year. Amari Cooper's not on the team. Cedric Wilson's not on the team. Tony Pollard got hurt in this game. Like, you saw the Niners. They're loaded. But they also, in a game with a seventh-round quarterback today, could not afford to throw an interception. Brock did not. They barely could afford to turn the ball over, and they did on a fumbled punt by Ray Ray McLeod. In a big tight game, in a low-scoring game where the defenses are dominating, turnovers are going to determine it. And today, when you watch the Cowboys, penalties creeped up, and they impacted them. Not as badly as the game last year in San Francisco, but it was Dak's decision-making. And 13 interceptions in his last nine games, and again, not there are several picks in that of those 13 that are not his fault. But even if that number's nine, you can't average a turnover a game. You can't be playing the best defense in the league and throw two picks, not to get tipped at the line of scrimmage, not to go off your wide receiver hands, that literally hit defenders in stride. Dominic, Len- Dominic Lenore, I'm screwing up his name, I just call him Lenore, jumped the route on you like that. He looked like Deion Sanders. He looked like Eric Davis. The other play that went off Jimmy Ward, who also jumped the route and ended up on Fred Warner, like, those are horrendous passes. Dre Greenlaw read you, like, those are the type plays that happen to Matt Ryan or Derek Carr that literally everyone that's watching the game makes fun of said quarterback. And that was Dak today. And when I pay, it's one thing, if if, if Brock Purdy would have thrown some picks today, at the end of the day, he's picked 262. He makes $700,000, and it would have been devastating, and it's not about what your paycheck is or where you're drafted. You're playing in the game. It is what it is. That's a $40 million a year player, $40 million. The standard and the expectation when you get paid that much money is so high. The reason when I'm watching the game today is like Micah Parsons, the hype, the, the potential defensive player of the year, him and Bosa, like, the standard in which he's held, like every time I looked at number 11, it's like he's living up to it, right? Every time I look at 97 or 19, these guys are just making plays. Yet Dak, the highest paid player in the game by a wide margin was honestly one of the worst players in the game. And you can say, well, his numbers actually weren't that bad. And he, you know, he did throw a great ball to CD down the sideline. That's great. He threw two picks that ultimately was a major reason that cost his team the game. And he threw a pick last year against the 49ers. Backbreaking. You cannot turn the ball over. And right now, Dak Prescott is a turnover machine. In a game when the Dallas Cowboys coaching staff did a damn good job. Dan Quinn, who might be a head coach on another team in the very near future, more than likely is going to be gone. So there's a chance the defense could take a step back. They're stuck with this quarterback. And this quarterback right now hasn't just plateaued. He's a good player. Solid. But holy moly, he throws a lot of interceptions and turns the ball over, and it killed the Cowboys today. And the 49ers and the Eagles, like, this this should happen. These are the two best teams in the NFC. Uh, I, I think when you look at the hierarchy of the NFC, there's the 49ers and the Eagles in their own tier. And then, honestly, probably Dallas in their next tier, and then you could argue over the next group of teams, right? The Seattles, the Detroits, the Giants, Minnesotas, uh, basically a bunch of, when the dust settles above average teams, but teams that were never going past the divisional round. And you look, this is a heavyweight matchup with star players, literally everywhere. You know, I often say it's a coach quarterback league because it is The, the quarterbacks make the most money because they should. When you have a good one, a Joe Burrow, a Patrick Mahomes, right? I mean, a Josh Allen, in theory, you ride them to the promised land. Um, Josh, Still got to find a way to get there, but Joe and Patrick are pretty sweet. And the Eagles have the advantage, right? Jalen Hurts was an MVP before he got injured. He easily could have won the MVP. Patrick Mahomes is going to end up winning. 
But when I look at the coaching matchup, like Kyle Shanahan now has four playoff victories in the last 12 months. He has six in the last three years. He's done this a lot as a head coach. Sirianni has one career playoff victory, and it was against the New York Giants. And I like Nick Sirianni. I'm not trying to be some hater. So I'm the Eagles have the quarterback advantage, clearly. Jalen Hurts is a better player than Brock Purdy. And Kyle Shanahan is a better coach than Nick Sirianni. And the other thing is, like, Sirianni is very dependent on his coordinators, and they're pretty good. Gannon and Steichen. Kyle calls the play, so he impacts the game. Obviously, the Eagles come out hair on fire. Sirianni does a good job getting him ready. That's also not an issue for Kyle Shanahan and the Niners. I think this game's going to be fascinating. It's just an incredible matchup of elite players everywhere. We will dive into the game uh, as the week goes on, but it played out correctly. And then in the other game uh, in the morning, <clears throat> it was an eye-opener. One, it's I'm so glad that we avoided, and I, I said when the Hamlin situation happened, I wasn't going to be critical of anything the league did about the outcome of how they figured out the situation with the game not being played. I did hate the neutral site in a dome for the three best teams were all outdoor teams playing in cold conditions. Like the Chiefs, the Bengals, and the Bills. Like, I, I can't be playing indoors. Th this isn't the Super Bowl. This is the AFC Championship game. So I'm glad, as Joe Burrow say, get those refunds, guys. Because that game, I, I did not like that. That thing bothered me. We avoided it. But the Bills, in a weird way for a team that, listen, I, I probably picked to win the Super Bowl at the beginning of the year. I said if they made it to Glendale, they were going to be my favorites because they were a dome team. If they would have won this game in the dome, I would have picked them against the Chiefs. They got their ass kicked today. They got thoroughly warped. It, it, it's one thing, obviously, Joe Burrow, the kid, guy's a star. <clears throat> Absolute stud. Think how many playoff games that guy's won. He won three last year. He's won two. He's won five playoff games in 12 months. And he's clearly leading the ship. And the defensive coordinator, the defense is solid, but... Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Mixon, and Higgins, that is a potent unit. You know, we, we talk forever about, you know, the big three, and for a long time, it was Kelsey, Mahomes, and Hill. To me, the new big three is Higgins, uh, Chase, and Burrow. Absolute ass kickers. I would not have been shocked. I told Stucky, like, I'm just not betting against Joe Burrow and the points. It's one thing to win a game. It's another thing to destroy the Bills. <clears throat> and that's what they did. They worked them. Like, ultimately, the Cowboys lost. Cowboys didn't get worked. Their defense showed up to win a playoff game. Their defense handled the 49ers for the for three quarters. They eventually wore down. Niners took advantage, won the game. Dak threw a couple picks. That was not by any means an ass game. That was a very, I, I was very entertained by that playoff game. Bills, Bengals, that was a, we're taking you to the woodshed, fellas. We're tougher than you. We're better than you. We're more potent than you. You're playing in Buffalo in this crazy snow environment. We're more prepared for this. And ultimately, a couple things translate in the playoffs. Physical defenses always translate. It's why the Cowboys had a chance today. <clears throat> it's why the Niners and the Eagles are still rolling and a running game. And I've said this forever about Buffalo. I can't, like, ultimately your quarterback is not Cam Newton. He's a, you know, a hundred... $300 million player, whatever he is, he makes $45 million a year. He's a fantastic player. He picked up some bad habits this year. He 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 kind of became this, like, hero syndrome guy. Like, you can – one thing Mahomes did a fantastic job of this season was, like, learning to live another down, checking the ball down sometimes. Not every single play I have to be Brett Favre reincarnated. And I got news for you. Mahomes is a better player than Favre, and Favre's one of the best players I've ever seen. But Mahomes – I thought this year was his most complete season ever. Maybe statistically he's throwing more touchdowns or whatever, but just in complete control of the game. That's also how Joe Burrow plays. Obviously, Burrow will hit Higgins and chase down the field, but he has no problem throwing the ball to his running backs. But the thing the Bengals do, obviously a lot better than the Bills, is they run the football. They will hand the ball to a legitimate running back. And in a game that's in the snow and you can't just throw bombs all game long, trying to run for 150 yards is a healthy thing to do. And the Bills can't do that. And they haven't been able to do that in Josh Allen's time as a starting quarterback. And Sean McDermott, I like Sean McDermott a lot. He's like, I value knowing, you know, he's one of the head coaches I know in the NFL. 
I was rooting for him today. They got their ass kicked because they're not that tough. And offensively, when you don't have a run game, which is weird, most defensive coaches love having a run game. It it's it's hard to win in the playoffs, and it showed today. And they have to find a way to get someone on their team who can run between the tackles. And you can go, this guy's getting us 100-plus yards. Because when the Bills went to four straight Super Bowls, and they were one of the best teams of the decade in the 90s, one of their best players who's in the Hall of Fame was their running back. Because you're going to play a lot of games, whether you're playing at Buffalo, whether you're playing at Kansas City, whether you're playing against the Steelers or the Ravens in outdoor inclement weather games. And you watch today, Burrow makes a lot of things happen. And he's very comfortable in the weather, but like their offense is very balanced and he is not in, in a weird way for the star quarterback. He's playing within himself. And you watch Josh Allen when you can't run the ball, it always feels like he's got to turn into either Cam Newton. He's got to run it. And it was really hard for him to do that. Or they're just chucking it down the field. And it's not going to work when you're playing at like Squaw Valley, you know, you know, or, or Vail, Colorado, and the snow's dumping. It feels like you should go skiing or snowboarding. And I, I thought the Bills, like, were just exposed for being soft today. Like the Cowboys, a lot of respect, not soft. Not that great, but they were not soft. Like there was one team today out of the four that you went, God, that looked like a soft operation. And it was the Buffalo Bills. And it feels like they've become very, very dependent on Josh who now, like, let's face it. Now, I'm guilty of this. When we talk about quarterbacks, it's always like Mahomes, Allen, and then Burrow, Herbert, Lamar, and that kind of crew. We got to do it a little differently. It's Mahomes and Burrow, and then Allen. And I love Josh. He's still one of my favorite players to watch. I I, I think eventually he's going to lead Buffalo to a Super Bowl. But they got to do a better job of, of building this thing around him. Because right now with the no run game, it's a problem, you know. And, and listen, we can be say he didn't play that well, and honestly, he's had two games where it's like a little more to be desired. And really, his season's been a little hit or miss. I believe in Josh Allen, but I'm not selling any stock. But you got to do a better job of like getting him a legitimate running back. Look how much better the Chiefs look with Pacheco. Now he was a seventh round pick, but just his physicality between the tackles, and it's not like Andy's calling run after run but they can run the ball with a physical element. Because when you run the ball, it's not just about playing your opponent. It sets the tone in practice. It makes your team more physical. And you watch the Bills, they just kind of look soft, which is pretty crazy because maybe I was fooled. I, I thought they were really, really good. And I've probably done this, and a lot of people have probably done this. Zach Taylor's having a lot of success, and it shows you when you get the right quarterback, they clearly have talent, and you know their defensive coordinator is, does a really, really good job, but Joe Burrow is a really, really, really special quarterback. Like, he is a – watching Mahomes yesterday go full legend on the injury was just made me feel like a little kid. Like, that's cool. You got to drag the guy out the field. Watching Joe Burrow just kind of – perfect playing the quarterback position it also kind of makes me feel like a little kid like this guy is just this this is what you want to watch and obviously the story all week is going to be Patrick Mahomes health I, I wish he hopefully he gets close to 100% as possible just because I want to watch these two two best players in the league Joe Burrow uh, Jalen too I mean Jalen went healthy he's awesome uh but watch these guys throw haymakers at each other just a fantastic day of football uh, and I think no one's shocked that the Niners won, but <clears throat> watching the Bengals thoroughly dismantle the Bills, not something that I saw coming.